Hi, it's time for a chime video. So what are we looking at? We're looking at a really, really, really early Newtone two note door chime. For all accounts, this door chime was made probably in the very beginning of when Newtone first started making door chimes, probably 1936, 1937, maybe 1938, something like that. This was most likely the entry level two note Newtone door chime of the day. It has a fairly small and compact size. And in fact, that was one of the selling features was that it wasn't really big and it wouldn't take up very much room on your wall. On the front of it, we have this really nice sort of art deco, sort of a music styled emblem on it. I'm not sure what they're trying to portray here exactly, but it definitely has a real art deco look. It has sort of an ivory finish. It is all metal. I don't know if it was ivory when it was new or if it was white. I don't think it was white because it's, if it had discolored, it would have discolored very evenly and I don't see any white on it anywhere at all. So let's go ahead and take it apart and see what we've got inside. We've got one screw right here at the bottom that holds the cover in place. And of course, it's a slotted screw, not a Phillips screw because I don't think they had Phillips screws in those days. We'll put our screw in a little cup there so we don't lose it. You know, it is a vintage screw and then the cover lifts off. And if we flip it over, you can see it's the same color on the inside. And that leads me to believe that this is the color that it always was. It may have changed a little bit over time, but for all intents and purposes, I don't think it was actually white. It's a nice sort of creamy ivory color. And the decorative plaque here on the front it's held on, it's got two little slots in the cover and the tabs go through the slots and it's just bent over to hold it, hold it in place. So it's a nice metal cover. And here inside, we have a surprise, some paper. We'll look at that in a second. So here we have a really, really early Newtone two note chime base. We have our two resonator tubes here and they have openings in each one here. There's one here and one here. And that's how it acts as a resonator because the sound vibrates and it amplifies the sound. We have our two tone bars here and here. The grommets are, uh, this one, the grommets are decomposed quite a bit and they're kind of gummy and sticky and it's kind of stuck in place. And this one sort of flopping around here, not much in the way of grommets left at all on these. Like many early Newtone chimes, this is all held together. You've got screws with nuts and star washers holding everything together because these were probably all hand assembled at the time in Cincinnati, Ohio. And then we have our two electromagnetic coils. The bottom one is for the front door because this is a two door chime. And if you think about it, not only is a two note door chime like this something to have in 1936, you also have it's a two door chime. So you have the front door, which gives you ding dong, and the rear door gives you a single note, just ding. And that was quite the thing. We have our plungers here, which still slide. Kind of funky sounding, but for as old as it is and the, and the shape that it's in, it's not bad. Our springs are intact and they don't look stretched or mangled, which is kind of nice. The coils are wrapped with friction tape, as you would expect. And here are our three wire connections. And actually underneath the dirt right here, stamped into the chassis, we have trans for transformer, front and rear for your button connections. And down here we have a label, patent pending, Newtone Chimes Incorporated, Cincinnati, Ohio. And there's a number, 1229, it's probably the number of the sticker itself because they seem to do that a lot in those days. It's a nice little compact chime. I like how the resonator tubes, they have these sort of dome caps on them, which makes it kind of nice. And on the back, we've got a hole to bring your low voltage wiring through with a grommet. And that grommet is still rather flexible. So whether that's original or not, I don't really know. So it's a nice little chime. Let's take a look at our surprise, our bonus which is a note from the, from the past, perhaps. If we open it up carefully, what we have in somewhat tattered condition is the original 
installation instruction sheet that came with it when it was brand new. It's very likely this chime may not have ever been installed or if someone had installed it they were the type of person that hung on to their paperwork that came with things they bought. They had it tucked away in here or inside the cover or something and here we have it today. Let's say this is 1936. That would make it 83 years ago. That's a long time to have a doorbell, don't you think? So let's take a look at our instructions here. They're a little tattered, but maybe we can sort of smooth them out just enough so we can actually read them. Let's take a quick look at our installation instructions. I've got them kind of spread out here so that they're mostly readable without mangling them any more than they already are. They're kind of in rough shape and the paper is pretty brittle. So we don't want to do anything to make it worse than it is. How to install and wire your budgeteer Newtone door chime. So remember I've done other videos where I've talked about how all Newtone chimes have names. And apparently that was true in 1936. And this model is called the budgeteer. I would guess because it was more reasonably priced than other models of the day. Here we have a diagram of how the chime base looks. If this is like other ones I've seen, this is basically the engineer drawing that they would have submitted when they filed for their patent. Remember, patent pending. We have a wiring diagram here. It shows our low voltage transformer. It also shows how you can use optional dry cell batteries. Let's start over here. Please read these simple instructions carefully. Then it's no job at all. But first, be cautious. One, do not oil or lubricate any part of the chime mechanism. That's the same thing we tell people today. Do not connect to direct current house wiring systems. If you are not on alternating current, use dry cell batteries. So that's a sort of interesting thing to think about. So in 1936, there were apparently still parts of the United States that the electrical system was operating on DC or direct current. Back in those days, turn of the century, turn of last century, I have to say now, there were all of the electricity wars going on between, say, Thomas Edison, who was a proponent of direct current wiring to homes, and other people like George Westinghouse and Nicholas Tesla, who were proponents and engineers of alternating current. And alternating current, of course, won out because that's what we have today. Apparently, in 1936, there are still cities and parts of towns that have direct current wiring. So you have to be careful of that. If you're going to use the wiring now in the house, do this. So this would be if you were replacing an existing door chime or more likely a door buzzer, what we would commonly refer to as a farmhouse buzzer. You know, the kind that goes when the kid pushes the button. Those are the ones that in the movies, the kid pushes the button and sticks a pin into it to hold it down and it buzzes forever and drives the lady of the house crazy. Carefully remove packing. Remove screw in the bottom of the cover and pull the chime cover away from the back plate. Remove doorbell and draw the wires through the hole marked B in the diagram. Mount chime on the wall space you've chosen about six feet from the floor, putting screws through the two holes in the back plate marked A in the diagram. Then connect the wires to the chime as shown by solid lines in the diagram. Follow diagram for rear door if you want the rear door signal. Otherwise, disregard this portion of the diagram. Replace chime cover, pressing it against the back plate to fit snugly, and fasten it to the bottom with a screw. So that's pretty straightforward. It's really only two wires to hook up if you have a front door, and it would be four wires to hook up if you have a rear door. What to do if you need new wiring? Proceed exactly as above, except that you draw three wires through the hole B and connect them there. And what the diagram shows here is that if you have a front door and a rear door button, that's a total of four wires. One wire from each button is a common wire. And what they show here in the diagram is that the common wires are spliced together at the transformer location. And then you take becoming one wire essentially. And then you take the three wires the transformer, the front and the rear into the chime. That wouldn't be my recommended way to do it because then you have a splice here and if you have a problem, it's harder to troubleshoot what that problem might be, but that's the way they recommended it. Maybe that was a common way to wire a doorbell or a door chime or a door buzzer in 1936. 
what to do for wiring with dry cell batteries. When operating this budgeteer new tone chime from dry cell batteries, connect two to four one and a half volt batteries in series depending on the amount of wiring in the system. Connect to chime as shown by the dotted lines in the diagram. And that's this section up here where they show four dry cell batteries connected in series and then to the chime. Caution. If you have an illuminated house number attached to your front door, do not connect it to the same bell wiring used for the chime. I didn't think they had illuminated house numbers in 1936, but apparently they probably did. And down here, we have special note. This chime is built to operate on a good 8 to 10 volt transformer. You may need a more powerful transformer if louder tone is required. We recommend our special 10 volt new tone chime transformer, style B. 10A. If your dealer hasn't it in stock, send $1 to Newtone Chimes Incorporated and it will be sent to you postpaid. So in 1936, you could send Newtone a dollar and they would send you a 10 volt transformer prepaid. What kind of deal is that? Now I don't know how much a transformer cost to manufacture in 1936. I'm going to guess that it was maybe at least 10 or 20 cents, something like that. I think if you went to a diner and you got the Blue Place special, you got the meatloaf and the green beans and a cup of coffee, I think it cost you like 40 cents. Seems like a really good deal for a dollar. Dollar was a lot in those days. I think if you were the average worker, you were probably making a dollar, dollar and a half or two dollars a day. I don't really know exactly, but a dollar is probably a lot. And maybe the transformer deal was a lost leader. Maybe it was an incentive to get you to buy the chime knowing you could get the transformer for a dollar. I also wonder what dealers would have sold the transformer for if they were selling it for a dollar also. Or maybe it was only 85 cents because they didn't have to mail it. The best part of this that I like is down here we have Newtone Chimes Incorporated, 3rd and Eggleston Avenue, Cincinnati, Ohio. The original location of Newtone in Cincinnati where they first started. Now it's a big brick parking garage. It's kind of depressing. So there you have it. From 1936, a Newtone budgeteer two-note door chime with front and rear door solenoids. This will probably end up in the museum in my office for a short time. And as I have time, I think this is a good candidate to be rebuilt so we can hear what it sounded like because these chimes are becoming harder and harder to find. I was fortunate that I was able to snatch this one up before anybody else got it. I think it deserves to be cleaned up and rung again, don't you? I hope you found this interesting and perhaps helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube because that always helps. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell or on the wheel, put in your email address, and every time we post a new video, you get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.